Morning, this is Troy from the Do It Yourself World, the new off-grid project. Barometric pressure is increasing. It's early, what is it, 10 minutes to 8 in the morning. Uh, 15, 16 degrees out and dropping. It's going to be pretty cold today with a minus 9 tonight. Um, 67 inside, but I just cranked up the wood stove so it should warm up. Let's walk over and have a look at the batteries here. Now, I am concerned because now I know I've got everything hooked up absolutely right. And last night, the batteries were st still at 12.2 at rest. They're 12.4 now with 50 watts of solar. Good news is they're 60 degrees, so they maintained some temperature last night, although it was cold. They held up and remained 60 degrees, but... 12.2 at rest at 71 degrees that they were last night is not good. So I've dumped everything I could at them and they were 12.2 since the day I first tested them before I even hooked them up on the tiny house on wheels which I thought was because they might have been sitting for a week but now these this forklift battery should not be damaged after sitting for that short period because they have a I think it takes them what is it a, a month or two months or I think they lose 30 percent a month so they would not have been deeply discharged in that short period but they were 12.2 if you remember back when I first checked their voltage and I've never got them to come up above 12.2 at rest so I'm starting to become really concerned about this and 12.2 seems to be the top voltage I can get these at rest um, specific gravity isn't coming up either by the way so something isn't right I've been pumping some serious current into these things I do have the voltage set right the uh, charge controller voltage is set right and the charge controller is working fine so there's nothing more I can do so the next step is to just try use them a little bit, see what happens. And I do have the big desulfator on them. Now that is on them overnight. I don't know if that's draining them down to 12.2, but I cannot imagine that desulfator. It's the only thing on them at night. That and the power inverter is plugged in, but turned off. So the next step is to put a big master switch on the inverter and see if that's draining the forklift battery at night if the power inverter might be putting a drain in there maybe there, there, there's a short in that and also then disconnect the the desulfator overnight and that'll be the next step now that I got the battery temperature up a bit better I should have recorded this I have just stripped out I did a video on how to check a diode and I just stripped out the old shorted dead diode and I took my new wind turbine blocking diode ordered from the US what I did is I cut the leads off this now this wire was I took the leads out of the diode and cut it short and what I did is crimped it tight on here this conveniently had a little hole drilled through and I crimped it on tight with pliers and I took the other lead and I curled it around this this nut and tighten it on with pliers and now what I'm going to do is tape this up tight so that it's protected from shorting and here is my new repaired wire for my wind turbine now later right now I've got a lot of work to do outside shoveling out my wind turbines uh, my wind turbine tower I've got two foot of snow on the ground blocking me from accessing my wind turbine so that's a bit of an issue right now but what I'm gonna do is put the new blades on the other the larger wind turbine and then I've got to find a and this is gonna be a task in itself I have to find a pipe that I can use on my wind turbine tower 
I have an idea, a general idea, where that pipe is in my meadow. Or uh, not in my meadow, in my um, forest shopping mall, what I call my forest shopping mall. To those of you who haven't been following regularly, this property used to be a dumping ground for other people's garbage. The owner of the property would get paid to dump garbage on the property. Which makes it convenient for a do-it-yourselfer and a person trying to become self-sufficient because if I need any materials I go off to what I call my forest shopping mall. So somewhere out there I know the general idea where the pipes are. But under two feet of snow it's going to be fun trying to find those pipes. Like I said, I have an idea where, so I'm going to have to dig a path to the area and explore around until I try to find that, that pipe. So, I do hope to get the other wind turbine up and running soon. And we'll see if I can find those pipes sometime in the near future. I don't know if you can see her quivering. You want to get the bird? She was quivering in excitement, absolutely shaking. You're still shaking, aren't you? You're excited, huh? Yeah. Pretty birds right there, huh? I don't know if you could see her actually shaking in excitement. She's quivering all over. Sometimes I let her out when it's uh, not too cold and not too sloppy on the ground. I'll let her out sometimes and she plays around. Yesterday I let her out. She went out on her own and she explored. And she came back in on her own. Inch of baby. And you're a big cat now. Well, I use my wood stove for everything now. I am cooking with this. I've got asparagus in there. I have been uh, extremely under the weather recently, so I'm c eating mostly fresh, healthy uh, fruits and vegetables. I've got my um, water up on the stove top. It's yellow because I use essential oils in it to help my breathing. And uh, tonight, I'm going to have asparagus. I usually don't buy this stuff because it's expensive, but I made an exception today. And I'm basically just steaming them on top of the uh, tiny house wood stove. So it's basically free energy cooking on top of wood stove, which you're using anyway.